Hi guys and welcome to the workshop. Today is a happy day because I finally got the bike that I've been waiting for for a really really long time so it's time to build this up. Uh, as you know the situation with the bikes and all industries in general is quite difficult so it's not so easy to get uh, the parts that you actually ordered and that's why it took so long um, but yeah thanks to the help of specialized I finally got my Tarmac SL7 which I've talked about a lot before so today I have it as a complete bike uh, but I'm going to change many parts in it to suit my needs so I'll guide you through all of that so stay tuned Okay guys, the bike is now ready and this is how it turned out. So as you saw uh, on the video, this was a complete stock bike from Specialized uh, that I got. But since I have some different component preferences and sponsors, um, I had to basically strip it back down to the frame for the most of it and build it up again with my own parts. Uh, so the things that were changed but are the same. Well, that's the group set. I took off the brand new one and installed one that I've been using previously. This way I have a new group set for my customers. 
uh, which is handy because there's quite a shortage of those parts mm, other than that uh, starting from the front of the bike I changed from the miniature 90 millimeter stem that comes with the bike as stock replaced it with my preferential 130 at the 12 degree negative rise uh, I also put on my favorite top cap another thing that I've changed are the handlebars and the size 52 tarmac comes with 40 centimeter aero flies um, which is too wide for me I like uh, narrow handlebars and the aero flies uh, are not really available at this point anywhere in the world basically and uh, everybody wants those but there are other handlebars uh, on the market unsurprisingly so I like the MVSES aero bars for example those are 35 centimeters uh, on the tops but 40 centimeters in the drop so they're quite heavily flared and that's a feature I don't really like uh, the tops are fine but 40 in the drops uh, is a bit too wide for me I'd prefer that to be 38 mm, so then I was looking for more options and I found this uh, now people don't really uh, look at pro components usually when going for high-end bikes they're just uh, not that popular uh, at least in my experience but I found this real nice pro vibe SL handlebar in 38 and it's actually just 190 grams so that's lighter than any other uh, aero road handlebar or even standard handlebars uh, so I went for it it has a couple of interesting features so as I said it's 38 it's not flared it has a very narrow section here in the drops which I like because I have small hands so I have a good grip on there and generally it looks pretty neat uh, staying with the handlebars I've used the new Silka uh, Nastro Piloti handlebar which is again a very thin one and it promises very high levels of grip which are well very well matched so I really like this handlebar um, and tape very grippy very thin so suits my hands also the tape comes with adhesive sections that you put on the lever so you don't need to mess around with holding it uh, and wrapping so that's also very nice uh, then on the stem we have uh, the bar fly mount that comes standard nowadays with basically every specialized model Mm, the frame is a size 52 as I said in the setting chameleon color but it's mostly raw carbon with these green little hints so really quite subtle and this should be the lightest finish that's available from Specialized for this bike at the moment mm, for the wheels uh, as I said earlier in my previous videos um, these are the wheels that I'm going to use for road racing these are the head Vanquish 6s I have a couple of upgrades on there already so for example I have the Silka uh, valve extender cover this is a little bit more aero than uh, going without it I also have ceramic speed coated bearings in there all six of them I have a 140 millimeter rotor in the front to match the TT bike so I can swap around with the wheels uh, again as I said earlier I'm, I was a bit afraid to use a small rotor in the front but with these modern Shimano brakes not really an issue at all going further back on the bike I have carbon works bottle cages these are super light but surprisingly durable and sturdy I've been using these for thousands and thousands of kilometers without any bottle launches so I'm sticking with those um, yeah the rest of the kit is pretty standard for me really quark d4 power meter Shimano of the race changings uh, 5339 obviously for racing again a must have for me is a chain catcher this one is a pro model from K Edge the bottom bracket uh, is actually new it's not a ceramic speed unit but uh, you can see it it's a Chris King unit with ceramic bearings um, I just decided to try this one for the time being I also have a Cane Creek uh, again if you zoom in you can see a Cane Creek aluminum preload adjuster on the cranks which is another neat feature that I'll be using for a while 
for the pedals again nothing new here speed play arrows although i have upgraded them with a titanium bow tie plate uh, first thing it's new so there's better engagement and you don't have that rocking motion people think that it's because the pedal body is wearing out but it's not it's because the bow tie is wearing out in this area and that allows the cleat uh, to become loose if you change that it will perform like new again uh, going further up to the saddle the seat post is standard for now but I have a special part for this coming later on uh, so it's stock for now the saddle is an S-Works uh, Mimic Power I like the power shape I've been using it for a while now so that's uh, that's standard uh, the Mimic saddle yes it's a women's saddle but I like it a lot so I'm sticking with that uh, it's more comfortable for me than the standard power so uh, that's all well and good uh, rest of the dry train pretty standard Shimano Durace Again with the ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system, molten speed wax coated chain, red cassette like on the time trial bike for the same reasons. Mm, what else really? Again in the rear wheel you have the ceramic speed bearings and I forgot to mention about the tires. These are S-Works Turbo Cottons in 26mm with Challenge uh, seamless latex tubes. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of the parts cover the bike uh, is very light comes in at 7.1 kilos um, people are asking if this bike really makes sense uh, compared to the wench and the way I think about it it's it's just a continuation of that line so it's an updated and lighter uh, model of the wench because it's just as fast or very very fractionally slower maybe but it's a lot lighter and 7.1 kilos uh, that's the total weight of this build that just that just proves it it could be easily mm, down to 6.8 or you say weight limit with some shallower wheels maybe a lighter saddle and the seat post that i was talking about so yeah really great race bike all around and i'm looking forward to racing this season okay that's uh, all about this one thanks for watching and see you next time